again, my name's Tom Abeta. I've been at Oberlin now. Uh, this is my 15th year at Oberlin. I, I help run our admissions office, and so um, I, I direct all of our recruitment efforts. And so we, we travel to about 40 states a year. Um, uh, you know, and we get students from about you know, all 50 states. 90% uh, of our students come from out of state that attend a place like Oberlin. Students from about 40 different foreign countries. And so um, did I ever think I'd do admissions? Uh, no, you know, how, well, what, is, what does a person do to be in admissions, right? Uh, can anyone guess what I majored in? Anyone guess? Communications. communications history. History. Music. Music, right? Yeah, Oberlin, right? <laughs> uh, I majored in mechanical engineering. <laughs> Right, and so um, all those you know, you know years of thermodynamic classes and advanced you know math that's really helped me to do what I do every day today. Right, and so I always say I started losing my hair that second semester of thermodynamics. Right, it just just went. But uh, uh, how, how many parents do we have here that this is going to be like your first child going through the college search process? Right, wow, that's, that's the majority of you. So those of you that have done it before, can you raise your hand? All right, so the rest of you, can you kind of look toward them? You guys look at each other in the face. Tell them it's going to be okay, right? Right? Uh, there's this crazy kind of frenzy now, right? This whole process of like you know admissions, college admissions. It's so selective. You know we need to apply to more schools and and all this stuff. So I'm going to give kind of a general overview of some things, but it really is. It's about finding right the might the, the right match and the right fit, right? And and I, I am a parent myself. I'm a parent of two sets of twins. Uh, all right, so, yeah, I know, right, I said that right, it's two sets, right, so I have, I have seven-year-olds, right, so they're in second grade, um, Aubrey and Grant, boy-girl split set, and then uh, three-year-olds, right, now, right now, so, yeah, I know, my wife's a saint, um, and so, uh, Levi and Faith, another boy-girl set, right, and so, I remember the first day of school, uh, and I was taking Grant, and Aubrey, and I was dropping them off, first day of school of elementary, right? So this is a big deal, you know, you know, because here's what everyone tells me, right, when you when you have parents, they think, you know what, Tom, you gotta cherish every moment, right? Because before you know it, right, they're gonna be going to college, right? And so, you know, now I, you know, I'm still on the front end, right? And so, you know, for you guys, now it's starting this whole process of thinking, you know, what's gonna happen? I remember going to the elementary school. You know, this is the whole thing, and you know, my wife dresses them up, she made this sign for them, we stand out in front of our house, like first day of school, you know, take the picture, and I, I take them off to school. And so immediately, you know, my kids get off, they're, they're in there, I'm just trying to walk them toward their class, and kids are playing out in the, in the front part of the, uh, uh, of the playground, and so my son says, oh, there's a bunch of kids playing basketball, I think I'm gonna go over there and play basketball. And so he goes over there and says, oh, it's great, it's great. And so I, I go back and get in my car, as I'm, as I'm driving away, I'm looking, off to the sign to see how Grant's doing. And he's kind of standing off by himself, you know, he's kind of standing, and all these guys are playing basketball, you know, he's just standing there. And I just remember, as I was leaving the parking lot, I just, I was like praying, God, I just pray that he makes friends, you know, all right? And so, <laughs> eventually, yes, right, he made friends, he's doing well, but that whole idea, right, of, of, of wanting to make sure that your son or your daughter finds community, right, finds the right community where he wants to be. And when we think about the college search process, it really is about finding kind of that right match, that right community. Where can my son or daughter kind of find a place where they're going to make friends, where I'm going to feel comfortable with them? Obviously, the whole academic piece, right, uh, we, you, you want to make sure that they're going to be offering the things that you want. But, but it really is, once you get to a certain level, certain types of schools, you're going to get the same education at many other places. And so it really is about finding the right fit and the right match. And so today, what I was going to talk about, I've got my little clicker here, so um, about taking control of the college search process, right? Rather than letting it control you, right? And so when you think about, I'm going to talk a little bit about tips and strategies throughout the college search process, um, and then really kind of what, how can you really get started on this whole thing? What, what, should, what should, we, should we be doing at this point? And then really kind of get into the application process. Maybe give you some insight, kind of what we really do, right? Has anyone seen the movie uh, you know, Admission? Did anyone see that movie? You know, where, where uh, it's a it's a Tina Fey movie, and it, it is a funny movie, right? And so, and there's a scene in there where like they're 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 sitting around and they're discussing cases around a table, and then it kind of shows up an image. Right, of a student kind of standing there and as they're talking about it. And so depending on what happens, you know, oh, admit or this or whatever, and they, if they say deny, then kind of like the floor opens up and that student like falls through the floor, <laughs> right? And so it's this visual, right, that can kind of sometimes only add to the stress of things. But, but we can kind of talk a little bit about what happens behind kind of the, the shroud or behind closed doors and how we talk about applications to give you guys some insight into that. 
Ooh, I ain't going back. So tips and strategies. First of all, right, there's many fine choices, not just one perfect college. And so a lot of times you start to think about this, well, hey, you know, I'm, I'm sending my kids, you know, they've gone through private education, and we're doing this, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the neighbors across the street, you know, Johnny's going to XYZ school, it's very prestigious, and so I want my son or daughter to also go to this one perfect school, right? There's many schools out there, and so just, I think just to kind of put it into perspective, right, there, there, are, there are really great places out there. Um, most students who want to go to college, get in somewhere, right? Uh, Here's the thing, even from my own uh, experience at Oberlin, right, we, we uh, only admit about 26% or so of the students that apply, right? So, so three quarters of the students that apply to a place like Oberlin don't get in. When you start to think of the, some of the most selective schools in the country, you know, they, they'll, they'll admit under 10%, right? Even though well over 90% of the students that apply to those places are well academically qualified, are great students, have great resumes. And so the whole idea of a selective institution is that there are far more well-qualified applicants than, than, than a college has spaces for, right? So then they are selective. So just because someone doesn't get into a particular school doesn't mean they're not good enough. It just means that there weren't enough spaces, right? And so that's why with the, how, the, the whole search process to make sure that you have a list of schools that you can go to, but people get in somewhere, right? I always, I always tell parents and students that kind of trust in the process because I think students will end up where they should go. Um, and then here's something here too about to, to, to parents, right? This is about your child's future and college fit, right? Let it be their application, right? And I have in there in parentheses, right? Uh, you know, uh, we are not applying, okay? Right? <laughs> right? So yeah, right? When you when you answer the phone at admissions office and you hear something and you hear a parent talking, well, you know, we're applying for this, like, oh, you are applying again, right? And so it really is. It, it, it's a it's a dead giveaway. You know, you, everyone's heard the term kind of helicopter parent, right? You know, in the sense that, you know, are, are we so concerned about our, 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 our child's success is that we want to do everything for them, right? Uh, but really, this should be a, a part where you're, you, you should start to kind of let go and let them kind of do, do uh, uh, the application part. Okay. I like to review. So, <laughs> uh, Students, right, they should use their college counselor and parents as their compass, right? When you start to think about where places to look at, where to go, uh, you know, use the people that know you best to kind of maybe even start as an initial list, some suggestions. Um, but again, applying to college should not become more important than successfully completing high school, right? Uh, try not to overemphasize the process. I think sometimes it's like you're so focused on applying to colleges is that you're actually, as a student, you're in school right now, you want to be successful, and you want to do the right things in terms of making sure that you're enjoying your college process. And that was just, you know, again, I want to echo kind of what was said earlier, if you were in the earlier session, which was talking about really your high school is a time for you to kind of learn who you are. And then let the student own the process, right? Parents are the coaches to provide structure and advice, not necessarily you know, filling out the application for them, okay? Um, I think it should be something where uh, students are really taking the lead. Now, uh, parents, you should encourage your students, right, to set up campus visits. They should be the one, you know, actually on the phone, you know, calling, uh, you know, uh, being able to say, well, we're arriving on this date. You know, obviously, you kind of figure out some of the specifics, but, you know, but you should encourage students to kind of take control of that process. Um, they're able to check the status of their applications eventually, right? And so what happens now, you know, with everything, uh, you know, most schools have electronic portals, right? And so you'll apply, you'll log in, you'll be able to check the status of your application, what's in, what's missing. And, you know, this person sent in their, their, their teacher recommendation, this other person didn't. So the student should kind of be, be able to monitor that and be able to, to do that. Now, I don't, it's getting harder and harder nowadays even for students to check their emails, right? And so it's crazy. And so now, you know, uh, you know <laughs> and so if it's something, you know, but now on our application and many applications, the Common App asks a student, you know, would you mind if you wanted to you know, maybe be communicated with as, through a text, right? And so even if it means a text, sometimes what we'll do then, if we're missing a part, we may push up, you know, hey, your application is incomplete. You should check your email to find out what's going on. You know, so it might be a short text so that students could find that out too. Um, they should be the author of their essays, okay? So um, uh, you'd be surprised that sometimes, uh, you know, you can kind of tell that maybe if, if uh, uh, an essay is written by someone else or it's been doctored or whatever, but just kind of make sure the student should own the process. Obviously, you should be a, a part of that, you know, and then the whole idea of topics of essays, I'll talk a little bit about that too, but uh, in, in just, just a second here. 
but parents, it's okay to help, help students organize, help them track through deadlines uh, without doing it for them, and then to give kind of gentle reminders to keep the process moving. I think a lot of times there, there could be stress in that thinking because, you know, depending on what institution you're applying to, you know, deadlines do matter. Uh, and so I think it does pay, uh, you know, to, to make sure that you have a plan, that you're working that plan, and you're meeting deadlines. Especially if it's throughout later in the process when it comes to scholarship applications, uh, deadlines definitely matter on that. So, uh, so you guys can put together a spreadsheet or whatever and then kind of help to remind them and go through the process itself. Finally, right, um, you should be preparing for disappointments as well as triumphs, okay? And so uh, even though your student is a great student and what parent doesn't love their child, right, but there's going to be times where, you know, throughout the process they're going to eventually apply, you're going to get into some schools, other schools you're not going to get into. And so again, that's that kind of opportunity for a learning moment there. Um, but you need to celebrate. Uh, this is a kind of a milestone in your child's life and parents, give yourself credit. Um, this is an important step towards independence. Now, I know that when you start to look at like the end of, your uh, of a junior year and you start to look at the cycle, right? Um, many times for college admissions officers, right, we begin a relationship with students that could last as long as, you know, 18 months, you know, to, to two years when we start to communicate with students. But especially that last um, year when you're thinking the second semester of junior year and then going into senior year, you start to look at it, it could be the last time, right, when you think about as a year that you'll spend with your son or daughter kind of together going through this process uh, before they end up going off to college, if they go out of state, they're, they're in a residential uh, place, depending on their summers, they might not even come back over in the summers, right? So they might be doing some things over the summer or whatever. And so really kind of enjoy that time. It's, it's, it'll be a great time for you guys to work together on this. Get started. First of all, it's about brainstorming, right? And so uh, parents and students, uh, you kind of get together and start to brainstorm significant activities, awards, honors, kind of perceived contributions to particular colleges, academic interests. Now, uh, has anyone been tracking some of the things, especially in the Times recently, there was like turning the tide. Has anyone kind of read, read that article? All right, what it is, it's, it's about this whole change, even in admissions, kind of this emphasis on, uh, because it's so stressful at times for students that they are overemphasizing, like, well, I just need to take as many APs as possible. I need to be the president of every club. I need to do all these things. Again, it's, it's so stressful, but there is, you know, when we think about colleges have a holistic review, a lot of times we're looking at all things, right? And so when we start to think about, we like students to be involved, we like them to take challenging coursework, but not to the point where they're totally stressed out all the time. I think, again, generally, when you start to see, you know, that students get admitted, you know, there's kind of this basic academic level for a lot of selective schools, but once, you know, what makes a difference is that demonstrated interest, right? So if you have two well equally qualified students, right, I'm gonna choose the one that wants to be at our institution more, right? And so those ways that you've shown that could make a difference in committee, okay? Um, the self-assessment, right, it really does come before rankings and websites, right? So a lot of times we start, everyone's looking at the U.S. News and World Report, you know, I want to apply to a top 10 college, top 10, you know, school, and yes, those, you know, I, I think in some ways, you know, um, that's some uh, uh, metric and gauge of, uh, of, of a quality of a school, but, um, but again, I think that when you start to look at rankings, you know, any school in the top 100, right, is going to be a great school. And a lot of times you want to visit and you want to check out those places because they can really tell you a lot about the community. Um, but you really want to look at the student's goals, their priorities, their strengths, their challenges. What's the right fit for a student? And then even personal preferences, right? What, are you looking for a big school, small school, a place located that's a little bit more isolated? Do you want to be in the middle of the city? All those different things, you start to weigh out some of those priorities. And then you want to optimize campus visit opportunities. And when we say again, this, this idea of demonstrated interest, I think it goes a long way. When she was, uh, if you were in the session earlier, she was talking about how uh, colleges track emails. And, and we actually do that. You know, we do track emails. We actually look to see, like, if there's a click rate, right? So even if you click in, right? So Google Analytics and all this other stuff. So we're looking, oh, they, they came to the website. They clicked in here. Uh, they went through this, you know. Um, what we're trying to do is kind of get a sense of like, if we admit this student, how likely are they to enroll, right? Because this whole admission side of things, right? If you apply to 12 colleges and a student gets into seven of them, right? You can only go to one, right? So you're saying no to six other schools. And so colleges are kind of weighing that, that, that demonstrated interest that how likely, if we admit the student, how likely are they to enroll? And so kind of the game of admissions in that sense is that we would like to admit the fewest number of students to make 
the class, right? And so, uh, and so demonstrated interest does go, uh, does go a long way. Take advantage of college fairs and be selective, right? If you're at a college fair, don't just go to a fair and just pick up every single brochure from every single table, right? Uh, but, you know, so you, you should do a little bit of research and kind of check it out. And so use, take advantage of those fairs. If there is uh, a table that you're really interested in, it seems to be a long line, don't wait in line and waste the time. You can go and go to other places and go back, right? Uh, but we, we do you know, track certain things. But again, it's a great opportunity to spend a little bit of time with the, with the representatives from the college. Interviews. Uh, a lot of places use interviews in the selection process. And so it's for those that become highly selective, we're looking at, first of all, wow, this student is really interested in us. They, they, they came to campus. They had an interview. Uh, a lot of times interviews can be done remotely. We do a lot of Skype interviews now if students can't make it to campus. Uh, there's alumni interviews, and so there might be an alumni representative in this area. Say you want to go to school in Boston, and there's a, you know, a, a rep here, but you can set something up. You know, so, so that's a great opportunity. Uh, students, be yourself in an interview. Right? Um, uh, you know, it's just an opportunity if we're, if we're building communities, because that's what selective admissions do. Right? If you have this great pool of applicants, Right? and they're almost all well equally qualified, right? you're picking and choosing individual students because you think, you know what, I think this student would be great here. And so when you're thinking about building a community, one way to tell is actually having a one-on-one -on -one interview. And so um, it's not like a job interview, right? Most people, you don't really get in or, or get denied based upon an interview, but I think that it definitely does help. Um, let's see here, the application process. Um, a rigorous course load does matter, right? And so I'm not saying that you need to take the most advanced classes in every single area. Uh, I, I, I get this question a lot. Sometimes students are, are, are they're like, well, you know what? It's um, going into my senior year. Um, should I take AP Physics, right? And so, you know, it's a tough class. Um, I think, you know, colleges really like it, but man, you know, I really want to take this, you know, advanced theater class or I'm really into music or whatever. I'm never going to say don't take a certain class or take this one, but I, but I want to advise students that um, you should take challenging courses all four years, right? We don't want you to slack off during your senior year, but, um, but you know, take courses that you enjoy, right? I, I wouldn't, you know, stress out so much. You know, I, I don't think it's, it's like splitting hairs, you know, the fact, oh, well, this student's not taking AP physics, but they've taken, you know, some rigorous course loads. And, and again, you're all, you know, most likely going to schools that have great counseling and, and take advantage of the counseling center. But you can actually call a, 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 um, a, an admission representative and ask a question if you have something specific about something. Grades do trump test scores uh, in general. Now, and so when you start to think about that, um, she mentioned um, in the earlier session that a lot of schools could be test optional, right? And so that, that you, you could think about test optional schools. I know that uh, scores do, do matter. You know, I know Oberlin does use them. The, you know, I think that there's research that, that shows a bunch of different things, right? You know, that all oh, testing could be biased, but the, still the, the best indicator is a combination of grades and test scores together because here's what a standardized test is supposed to predict. It's supposed to predict um, first year success in college. Right? And so test scores are one predictor, but GPA and rigor of curriculum is also another predictor. So looking at all these things together, but if you're applying to schools that are more holistic and they kind of look at all different factors, um, they're going to take some of the biases in testing into consideration. Right? And so, oh, this student is first generation, or, or they're coming from a disadvantaged background, or you know, they might have a, a learning difference. You know, so whatever it is, there's lots of different things that we take into consideration. But just to kind of look at that, and you can ask the questions of the admissions uh, offices of whatever schools you're applying to. Teacher recommendations, right? Make wise choices, ask weeks in advance before the deadline. So they can, you know, common sense here. Uh, senior year, no time to take a break, right? And so you should definitely take challenging courses all, all, all through. And then demonstrate your passion or level of engagement, right? And so um, what does that mean? Uh, and again, there could, usually there's only one co-director or one uh, president of a club. And so you want to kind of think about like, well, what do I enjoy? And then, you know, and do those things. And then also kind of that express uh, level of interest in, in the college or, or the school that you're interested in. You know, again, if you've gone to, gone to visit them, if you've contacted a faculty member, all those different things, I think those do make a big difference in, in the overall admissions process. 
And then uh, the application process here, extracurricular activities, quality versus quantity. You, we like to see students that kind of have gotten involved in areas. They don't have to list every single thing. I think that it's OK also to think about if you've been in, involved in work or if you have other family responsibilities or other things, you should list those. Um, essays, right? A student's story, uh, it's the voice of the application. Most things in an application are lists, right? And so you got grades, uh, clubs and activities. All those things you really can't change, right? By the time you apply, your GPA is what it is, your transcript is what it is, your, your clubs and organizations. You're going to have some, a couple different narratives in an application. One is the teacher recommendations, but quite frankly, it's very rare to ever get a bad teacher recommendation, right? Would you ever ask someone that doesn't really like you to do a teacher recommendation? No, right? So that really is the kiss of death, right? If you get a bad teacher recommendation, I think you, <laughs> wow, someone actually was like, didn't like this student? OK, so, so teacher recommendations, yes. So when you think about your essay, not that it's the most important thing, but it is the one area that we get a sense of who you are as a person, tell a little bit about your voice, right? And so it's your view of the world. It's how you think. It's how you write, creativity, um, self-awareness, self-reflection, your maturity. Now, this whole idea of, ex of eccentric events versus ordinary moments, right? You don't have to write about like this, you know, um, you know, some kind of you know, one in a million types of experiences. It can be an everyday occurrence, right, that you write about, but it's how you choose to write about it, right? I still think of this essay, you know, this about this kid that wrote about working at Quiznos. And so, you know, he talked about like as the speed of a ninja, you know, slicing through tomatoes and doing this and so, and how he had to make 50 chicken carbonara sandwiches and, they, they made this, and, and by the time, you know, right when they got the order ready, they called in and canceled the order, right? And so, uh, but again, this is a kind of an ordinary thing, but he talked about, like, how he learned a, a work ethic and eventually how he doesn't want to make sandwiches for the rest of his life, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, you can write about an ordinary topic, but the way that you choose to write about it can really say a lot about you as a person, right? Uh, and so, is it the most important part? No, but a lot of times it tells you a little bit of personality about who the student is. Um, before you hit submit, proofread, right? You would be surprised, right? And so um, uh, Oberlin, one of our famous alumni, Julie Tamor, she, uh, she uh, uh, the stage production of The Lion King, okay? So she's very, very famous for that. Well, there was someone that wrote about Julie Tamor, but she spelled it, instead of Lion King, she spelled it L-O-I-N. So she spelled Loin King. And so in this essay, she keeps talking about the loin king, the loin king. And so when you're reading it, it's just you, obviously everyone on the table is just chuckling, right, about, you know. And so make sure you proofread, right? And so especially if you're writing an essay that is very specific to a particular institution, right, you want to make sure that uh, if you're using the same essay, please change the name, right, to match the institution, right? So every year you're getting students saying how much they want to go to a different college, right, and they're applying to you, right? <laughs> Stay in touch, contact with college office, uh, colleges matters, uh, and then relax and focus on making the best choice possible, right? I can't emphasize enough about the relax part, and I know that, that sign there was like we have a minute or so left. Here's what I want to end with. College is a match to be made, right? Not a prize to be won, right? And so when you start to think about, right, because if you have made the right match, then you have won the prize, right? And so uh, this whole process of what's the right school for you, and then kind of matching up with that. Um, I, we might have a minute or two. Are there any questions that maybe I can address? Yes? That does matter, actually. You know, what happens is that every school, every high school, when, when they submit an application, they give us a profile. And so typically, very selective schools, uh, schools that have more holistic review, it's usually one person that kind of reads from a certain region so they get to know the schools, know counselors. And uh, we, we definitely know a difference when you think of the quality of a school. So we're taking that into context, right? And so we know that maybe a lower GPA at a more rigorous school that sends 80% of the students on to four-year institutions is a big difference from maybe, you know, a, a, another, you know, large public school that only sends 12% on. You know, so we look at all those things, so it does make a difference. Any other questions? OK, and so I guess here's what I want to end with. Um, I want to wish you guys, uh, in terms of just the whole college search process, you have plenty of time, depending on, on, on how old your, your child is. 
but take advantage of, of using the resources. There are actually real people, right, behind this. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think that it, it makes a difference. If, you're, if you have questions, please reach out. Any good admissions officer should help you get to where, where your child belongs, even if it means not their institution, right? And so um, just want to leave you with that. And thank you for, for attending the session today. Oh, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, how often do Thank schools you. unweight grade point averages? Um, it's about a mix. I know we actually unweight GPAs and you know. Yeah. But here's what we do: we unweight.